Okay, the diagnosis of the week is going to be this old 1998 Mercury Villager. So it came in, it was uh, actually the number one complaint the customer had was it had a surge. Uh, sometimes when it was cold, sometimes when it was warmed up. Um, I drove the car, I didn't really notice a surge too much. I noticed like a tip in hesitation once on test drive. Fuel numbers are pretty good. I mean, the trims were plus or minus 10, which is close. For this old thing but um but the, the problem in my opinion appears to be a failed fuel injector which was kind of common and i just want to show you how i know this one injector is bad and which one it is without taking the engine apart okay now see it sounds pretty decent right there um but we're going to use our pico scope okay and we're going to look at current so i started looking at things i looked at the distributor signals i've got those hooked up you know, because distributors used to be common to, injectors were common years ago on these things too, from what I remember. But, you know, the distributor signals look really good. There are no codes in the ECUs, nothing. Uh, so the, the, the scan tool is not much help here. So I decided to look at some injectors. So what I did here is I have a trigger on number one cylinder. So my blue is my number one plug wire, all right? So I've just got a sync go hooked up right to number one. Just clamp around the wire. It's old school engine, still got plug wires. And then I took my current probe and I went around the injector fuse. Now this engine is pretty handy because it has a fuse that just runs the injectors and nothing else. A lot of modern cars today, there are a lot of stuff on one fuse. You could still use it, but there's just a lot more activity. Sometimes coils are on it, sometimes purge solenoids are on them, you know, fuel pump, whatever. So you can still get what you need, you know, without doing a bunch of work. It's just, it's cloudier. Well, this is kind of simpler because there's nothing else on this fuse except those injectors. So injectors of this vintage on these Nissan engines, by the way, this is a, a basically a Nissan Quest vehicle. I know it says Mercury, but the only thing Mercury on it is the label. And it was sold at a Mercury dealer when it was new. But it's basically a Nissan engine. It's Nissan 3.0. The newer ones are 3.3s uh, from what I remember. But anyway, back to the Diag. So we'll use what we learned in kindergarten to figure some things out. So I'm going to stop this. All right. Now, my red is my injector current. So every time the computer fires an injector... I have current. Well, you notice one of these, right? When I say about kindergarten, it's one of these is not like the other, right? Or which one of these is not like the other. So let's just say this is cylinder one, all right? Two, three, four, five, six, back to one. The firing order on this engine is one, two, three, four, five, six. Now you might say, well, Chris, yes, this one here looks like a problem, and it is. That's a shorted injector. It draws more current and it has a, it doesn't have a slow ramp up, okay? See how these other ones ramp up kind of slowly? That's actually where the injector opens, see that little pinnacle hump there? So that's how I can tell the injector actually opened. But when you see these shorted ones like that, look how that just goes shoot, darts straight up and then kind of has a, um, like a paper cut, I guess if you want to call it. But see how that draws more current? That thing is electrically shorted and it's not doing the same amount of work as everybody else. So this thing needs an injector. Now, the next question is how do we know which one it is? And I'll explain that here in a second. But what I wanna do is see how much difference this is. So I'm gonna put a couple cursors down. And right now at this engine temperature, this thing is drawing 120 milliamps more than the others. See, I just drew this line here, right across the top. They're all pretty much the same except that one. Now the question is, is how do I know which one it is? You know, this is an older vehicle. Customer's probably not gonna slam dunk six injectors in it. It's a lot of money, a lot of work, probably not worth it. So you never know when an injector is gonna fire, okay? You can't always assume that this is number one injector. Because if you look right here, this thing's firing right before the number one plug. So in your brain, you would think, oh, that's that's gotta be number one. 
chances are that's not the case. That's why you can never time off an injector. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna play this screen here. All right, so that's a live screen. And let's unplug an injector that can get to very easy. See, the back injector is running that intake manifold. That's kind of hard to get to. So let's unplug this one right here, all right? Number four, all right? So number four is electrically unplugged. Now let's go back here and see what we got, all right? So look at that space I've got there, all right? See, I've got, let's stop this, all right? So we'll call it this one here with my uh, number one plug. One, two, three, four, five, blank, number one. Okay. Well, I didn't unplug number one injector. I unplugged number four. So let's do the firing order from there. So let's put a couple of different, let's put some rulers up here. Oops. If I can grab it. I'll grab this little this is why I like this scope so much. The, the power of this Pico scope is unbelievable. We'll grab these cursors. All right, and we're gonna line these up right here. Okay, so what I just did is I put my zero mark there. That's number one, and that's number one again, 720. All right, there's the crankshaft spins 720 degrees. 360 times two for each cycle, you know, because the piston comes up twice, comes up on the exhaust strokes. The exhaust strokes right here. All right. Well, let's put six rulers in here because this is a six cylinder engine. So I'm going to select six. Oops. Too many. All right. So now I put these rulers up here. All right. So this, this area is cylinder one. <clears throat> so, excuse me. So cylinder one, two, three, four, five, six, back to one. That's my firing order. That's not my injector order, as you can see, because number four, all right, so one, two, three, four would be right here. The one that's missing is injector five, because my firing order, if, th if this is number four here, hopefully this comes out right. <laughs> so. If, if, if this is number four here that I unplug, I can consider this injector four, five, which is my shorted one, okay? Then back to six, one, two, three, four, missing injector, five, the junk one. Does that make sense? So number five injector is my shorted injector, the one behind the intake manifold. So he's my guy back there that's shorted. So I'll go ahead and plug this back in. Number four. So by unplugging number four injector, I can figure out the firing order of the injector. Well, I know the firing order of the injectors matches the engine. It just, it doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna be in the same time. So I hope you uh, learned something from this or just found it interesting like I did. This is, uh, this is a pretty remedial job. You know, this is old school stuff. I know it's a 22-year-old vehicle at the time of this shooting, so, but, you know, techniques like this uh, can be used all over the place. So, thanks for watching.